Welcome to this video on Kirchhoff's junction rule, sometimes just called the junction rule. And this rule, so to speak, is really just a statement of conservation of charge. Conservation of charge is really a form of matter conservation. In other words, charge is not created or destroyed anywhere. Charge isn't used up. Energy can be moved from charges to other things or other places or other positions, but it's really that charge is neither created nor destroyed. Now when we talk about a junction rule, we're talking about these positions over here, which before I've referred to as splitters, which remember is synonymous with the idea of a junction or a node. Another one would be, of course, over here in the circuit. Be careful not to consider corners to be junctions or nodes because they are not splits, they're just bends in the wire for the drawing purposes. Over here in this circuit, there are no junctions or splits. So we'd say there are no junctions here, and this is going to help us justify something as we will see um, at the end of this video. So basically what this statement says <clears throat> is that if I name the current in each of these wire branches, as we call them, between the different nodes, I will name them, let's call this one over here, I1. I would then call this current over here, I2, let's say, and then this current out here on this outer branch as I3. In order to show that charge or current is conserved, what I might write here, let's, let's do conventional current direction as this direction. Now when the current reaches this point, there's a split. We will talk about how the current moves into one split versus the other in a subsequent video. But what we're going to say is that the current will split. So think of water as getting to a point in a pipe where there are two options. Now the current's not choosing where to go. It's naturally going to be attracted in one direction or the other, really both at the same time. But if you're tracking, let's say, Bobby the electron again, Bobby can't go through I2 channel and the I3 channel at the same time. That would break the statement of conservation of charge. So in other words, what we could write here is that I1 is equal to I2 and I3 added together. This is showing that charge is conserved as it moves through any junction. So there's no opening where water is flowing out of this or charge is just spraying out. This is what it's showing is that the charge can only go in one direction or the other, or a particular amount of charge can only go through one direction or the other. We're going to use the junction rule in conjunction with the loop rule in order to solve problems where we have multiple variations of current that are unknown. So we're going to use it as a method to solve for more than one unknown value. What we will look at in the next video is how do we tell the equivalent resistance of resistors that are connected in series with one another versus connected in parallel with one another. A lot of the same ideas will be carried over from the capacitor videos of the same topic.